If you're collecting a Sons of Horus army, then you're going to need a lot of infantry. This guy took me just under 45 minutes to paint, not including the drying time. So sit back, relax, and I'll show you how I did it. I want a nice dark bluey green on the model to start with, and my secret weapon is Drake Scale Green from Colorforge. Drake Scale Green is an exact match for Stegadon Scale Green, so you can use that instead if you want to. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some Lupercal Green, and we're going to paint this over the miniature in a slightly strange way and a little bit different to how we normally do. So I'm going to thin the paint down as normal, but I'm going to use a dry brush. I'm going to wipe most of it off, and then I'm going to paint this over the majority of the model, leaving the dark colours in the recesses. I'm going to carry on doing this using Sons of Horus Green next, and this is going to start to brighten up the model. And what I'm doing here is I'm starting to focus around those areas that get the most light. And I'm going to use a combination of dry brushing technique as well as a stippling motion. But don't forget, I'm using the paint in a consistency that is exactly the same as if I was painting layers, and I'm wiping most of it off my brush as well. Once that first coat of Sons of Horus is dry, I'm going to go back in targeting those areas that are going to catch the most light and just refining the highlight again using a stippling technique with normally thin Sons of Horus and wiping most of it off my little dry brush. The final highlight I'll do is with Cyberite Green and again make sure you thin it to a normal layer consistency, wipe most of it off your brush and then stipple this around those areas that are going to get the most light. Once that dries, it'll blend in, and you can then go back in and add some more side bright green if you want to make the armour stand out and produce more contrast. The armour might look a little bit stark, but we'll blend it all together next. And this is a technique, again, I've learnt this from Richard Gray. I'll put his channel in the description. He's a fantastic painter. If you've got a black oil paint, it might be easier to use that. But all I'm going to do is take black Templar contrast paint and paint this over the entirety of the model. Don't worry, I haven't gone mad. All I need to do now is take some contrast medium, and it's really important you do this quickly before the Black Templar dries, and paint this over the Black Templar. You can then take wipe your brush off and use this to control how the Black Templar appears on the model, and you can push it down into those recesses and make sure that all that prior work you've done starts to shine through in the armour. Once that dries, you can have a really nice effect on the armour. So what we're going to do now is go back in with some side bright green, and I'm just going to use, again, very thin paint, wipe most of it off your brush, and use a stippling motion around those areas where you think that the light is going to hit the majority of the model. So I'm looking at things like the helmet on the chest plate, the top of the shoulder pad, for example. As that side bright green is nice and thin, it'll blend down as it dries, so it won't be as stark as it first appears. Next up, we're going to paint that one black shoulder pad, and the colour I'm going to use for this is Model Colour Black from Vallejo. The reason I'm using this paint is because when you thin it down, it covers fantastically well, much better than a bad and black. And because we're speed painted and going through these quite quick, I only want to do one coverage. So I'm painting the shoulder pad and any leather pouches as well as any piping on the model. Next up, I'm going to highlight the shoulder pad area using the same technique I used with the side bright green, except this time I'm using Mechanica's Grey. So make sure it's nice and thin, wipe most of it off your brush, and then stipple it onto those high areas where it's going to catch the most light. When it comes to highlighting things like the leather pouches, I'm going to do more of an edge highlighting style here. So just use the edge of the model and run your brush along the sides to catch a nice sharp highlight. We'll do the metallics next. I want a nice dark metal colour to start with, so I'm going to use dark silver from Pro Acryl, and I'm going to make sure that I paint this over all the bits that are going to be silver, such as the strap across the front of the chest plate, any augmentations, as well as parts of the weapon. As I'm going to shade all the metallics together, the next colour I'm going to use is Retribute Armour. I'm going to use this to paint all of the gold elements. There's not many on this model, but Sons of Horus do have gold studs on their shoulder pad. This guy has an Aquila on his head. I'm also going to paint part of the head crest as well. To shade all of the metallics and to give them a kind of dirty feel, I'm going to use Agrax Earth Shade, and I'm going to paint this over everything I've just painted silver and gold, taking my time and make sure that it doesn't pool, making sure that it doesn't spill onto other areas of the model that I've already finished. This is fairly straightforward, but just take your time with it. Once that Agrax Earth Shade is dry, I'm going to highlight the metallics, but I'm only really going to highlight the silver because the gold is still bright enough. And the colour I'm going to use that is Lead Belcher, which is still dark silver, but something like chrome or stormho silver will be too bright here. I want to keep it fairly dull and muted to stay in the style that I've painted the armour. This style of painting is really easy to do and it should help you get these finished in no time at all. We'll move on to the crest next and I'm going to base this using corn red, which is a nice deep rich red and again has fantastic coverage. Once that corn red is dry, I'm going to take a much brighter, more saturated red to highlight it, and the colour I'm going to use is Evil Sun Scarlet. And all I'm looking to do here is catch those parts of the plume which are raised. So you'll have corn red in the recesses and Evil Sun Scarlet on the raised parts, which will just give you a nice little bit of contrast on that plume and draw attention to it. Into the home stretch now. So the colour I'm going to use next is Corax White, and I can use this to base coat the plasma coils, but I'm also going to use it to base the eye sockets and also any lenses that you can see on the model. 
to quickly paint the eyes and the lenses, I'm going to take Blood Angel's red contrast paint and just paint a nice thin layer of this into those areas and give you a nice false glow effect. For the plasma coil, I'm going to take Griff Hound orange contrast paint. I'll put a fairly thick coat to this on, but it'll give you a nice orange, uh, glowing orange effect here as well, which is a real simple and nice easy win. The last thing I want to do on the armour, now that everything else is finished, is go back to Cy Bright Green and use this to pick out some of the sharpest edges that are going to catch most of the light. I've not got much on my brush at all, I'm just using the shape of them all to drag the side of the brush and get a nice easy highlight. The finishing touches are going to be some decals, so I've taken some gloss varnish and painted this over the areas where I'm going to put them, and then I'm going to put the shoulder icon on, and I'm also going to put the legion number on the left greave as well. If you're not sure where they go, check the box art. The decal sheet's actually got instructions on them where, where they go and what part of the model they're for anyway. And there we go, a rough and ready Sons of Horus model which took me 45 minutes to do. Now across a whole army you're going to need that speed, so I hope this video was useful and you found it helpful big thank you to all my patrons who without you this channel wouldn't happen thanks for watching check out some of my other content and i'll see you next time